Hi guys, and welcome to our week ahead video. Now in this week's video, our focus will turn to overall risk sentiment in the markets. We've had some up and down uh, price action in terms of equities over the last two weeks and risk assets in general due to the re-emergence of those uh, second wave virus cases coming out in, not only in the US states, uh, but as you know, in Beijing as well. Now we think there is some great tradable opportunities coming up in this week, specifically focused on risk sentiment, not only in terms of the virus, but also in terms of some economic data points, which could, could offer some interesting opportunities. So join me now to see exactly how we're preparing for this week's upcoming events and hopefully how we can trade them in this upcoming week as well. So let's quickly take a look at the baseline. Now this week, as we said, our focus turns to overall risk sentiment with the ongoing fight between two very different narratives. So there's essentially uh, two trains, if you will, that the current that the market is currently riding on. The first one is the recovery train and the second one is the virus train. Now the passengers on both of these trains have some very good reasons for getting on it. And let's quickly take a look at both of them, starting with the recovery train. Now the first one, recovery side, or recovery narrative is currently very thrilled as the equity markets have made a truly remarkable recovery from that mid-March lows. And this train is basically fueled by the unprecedented stimulus put in place by central banks as well as governments around the globe. And this has also fueled hopes for reflation as the market tends to look towards the reopening of economies and take solace that the worst is now probably behind us. And recent data seemingly played well within or into the recovery narrative. The most recent NFP as well as retail sales from the US smashed expectations to the upside with both printing record high numbers. Retail sales jumped 17 spots, 7%. and was a very good sign for consumer demand overall as well as overall growth prospects. Apart from that, the Fed has again proven that they will uh, keep the uh, music playing, so to speak, by appeasing markets this week by saying that they will start buying corporate bonds directly. Now, was it a coincidence that the Fed did this just after the second wave uh, induced equity sell-off uh, appeared the week before? I'll just let you be the judge of that. We've also seen some minor green shoots appear in other major economies where PMI numbers have shown better than expected improvements across the board as well. Uh, I think ECB's Weidman sums up the underlying theme for the recovery train in a recent interview when he said that Germany has had one of the biggest contractions in history, but that the low point should now be behind us and things are improving. Turning then to the other side of the coin, the other train, which we will call the virus train for the lack of a better word. I would probably prefer to call this train something like the disjointed reality between current financial market performance and the real economy. But of course, nobody has time for that. I'll just stick with the virus train. So passengers on the virus train have made themselves known at the end of last week, as well as this week, when a sudden surge in virus cases in various US states sent risk assets tumbling. Now the fears of a second virus um, basically made landfall as cases rose in the US but also in other parts of the world including Beijing. In Florida specifically authorities reported another 4,000 cases or another 4.5 percent increase in daily numbers just today that Saturday by the way which was the biggest daily increase since the pandemic began. Now the real issue for markets is not only the rising numbers but rather what the rising numbers might mean for further lockdowns being put in place. In China for example certain parts of Beijing has already been locked down and controlled. In the US however the response to further lockdowns has been rather limited which has kept a, a flaw in risk assets to some extent. Now on Friday, something happened that caught the markets by surprise and sent risk assets moving uh, down sharply. And that was that the rise in numbers actually caused Apple, the company, to close 11 stores across the most affected states. Now this was a curveball for markets because they were fixated on what the government might do but did not expect companies to actually take the matters into their own hands, so to speak. Now apart from a second wave virus fears, the virus train passengers also point to various big caveats in the recent better than expected economic data points like that NFP, like the retail sales. And even though we've had better numbers, just taking a quick look at the overall Bloomberg US recovery tracker, we can see the picture still very bleak. Now, in the light of this, those on the virus train side argue that the central bank and government stimulus skewed the recent NFP and retail sales sprints. For retail sales, they argue that it was artificially boosted by that 1,200 stimulus checks, 
as well as the additional $600 benefit, which meant that some workers actually earned more during that period compared to their regular take home salary. And for NFP, they argue that the details regarding how certain employees cla were classified or classified themselves rather caused a big skew in the actual number of jobs added in May. So what does this mean for us? The big question is, you know, which train has got it right right now? Is it the recovery train or is it the virus train? Now, looking at the upcoming risk events for this week, there's a couple of key events that could sway risk sentiment either way and could provide some great short term scalping opportunities if you know what to look for, of course. So the first focus point would be second wave virus fears. Now, the second wave virus number saw a big push low in equities at the end of this week as well as the, the prior week as well. But it didn't have the same intense reaction on markets throughout this particular week. However, of course, Friday's Apple announcement did change that completely as the news showed that uh, the first real lockdown restrictions being reinstated after cases started to rise and that not by the government but by a company by itself so as mentioned in the previous section the numbers for saturday has already exceeded those by friday by quite a big margin and the real question now is what will the market make of this will the increase in cases be discounted if it doesn't lead to further restrictions or will the increase be enough to convince participants that more restrictions are imminent and of course, only time will tell. Now, looking at economic data, the upcoming market flash PMIs for both the EU and the US will garner much attention this week. It is considered as a leading or forward-looking indicator, the PMI metric. So it will be very important to establish whether businesses expect conditions to improve or whether they expect them to worsen from here. The market's already anticipating another round of better uh, than expected readings after that rebound we've seen in May data. And even though it will take a while to get back to pre-virus levels, the market's forward-looking nature will want to at least see whether the data continues to show a further slowing um, or maybe a further bottoming of that contraction data. Also in this slide, we have the PBOC or the People's Bank of China uh, coming up with a new uh, rate decision. And it might give risk assets a shot in the arm if the bank decides to follow suit with the Fed and try to inject more fresh stimulus by either cutting rates or maybe further easing credit conditions. Apart from that, there's also a couple of key U.S. housing and personal income spending data, which will also be watched for further possible signs of the recovery. Something else to keep in mind is we are coming up uh, to month end as well as quarter end rebalancing. Now, even though the official month end and official quarter end is only next week, Tuesday, we might see some preliminary portfolio rebalancing uh, coming up in the upcoming week. So it's always something just to keep in mind, especially since we've seen, you know, massive excessive moves in both equities, commodities, fixed income and FX across the board. So it can make for a very interesting end to quarter two indeed. Then looking at the possible sentiment shift for risk sentiment, starting with the hawkish ones, taking a look at second wave virus cases. Now an increase in cases has seen some pan uh, panic coming back into the risk assets over the past two weeks. And the real question we need to ask is, are these jumps alarming to markets? Yes, they are. But only if the increase in numbers leads to additional restrictions or further companies like Apple closing stores as a precaution. Now, if there's no lockdown restrictions reinstated, then the market should eventually price in the second wave increases and start to discount the numbers eventually. Now, this can create an opportunity to fade the dips in risk sensitive currencies, but only if no further restrictions are put in place this week. Looking at economic data, are we in for another round of V-shaped looking charts this week? Preliminary estimates does seem to point to a possible another round of V-shaped looking uh, charts this week, especially for the EU and the US PMI numbers, which should move further away from that very deep contraction territory. Now, any better than expected prints for PMI metrics out of France, Germany, the total EU numbers and the US can create some great, interesting, short-term tradable opportunities for risk assets, especially if we come in above the market's maximum expectations. Looking at stimulus as well, last week we did see the Fed step in to save the day once again with that announcement to buy corporate bonds directly. Now, even though the Fed has signaled a signal to do this before, the announcement came on Monday right after the previous week's equity sell-off. So we need to keep our eyes and ears open for any further stimulus talk from the Fed um, as well as the U.S. government as jittery equity markets make for the perfect environment for stimulus comments to ramp up and can create opportunities to take advantage of. Also keep the PBOC in mind, which might offer some solace uh, to the upside if they over deliver in terms of uh, easing this week. Turning then to dovish sentiment shift, starting with second wave virus cases once more. Now we know that the markets got caught off guard on Friday with Apple announcing those store closures and showing that restrictions might be taken into the hands of business owners if the government doesn't lock down things again. So as we mentioned before, 
An increase in virus numbers will only catch the market's attention for so long before it starts to discount it. But if the market is convinced of possible further lockdown restrictions around the globe or actual further restrictions uh, is put in place in this week, then risk assets might be in for some further downside. Also looking at economic data, markets already expecting better than expected PMI data from the US as well as the EU. Thus, with the current virus fears re-escalating, the last thing that risk assets would like to see is a slowdown of global PMI data, showing that a slower move out of contractionary territory, that'll of course be a negative and definitely something worth trading. Looking at stimulus, given the market's reliance on further stimulus coming from central banks and governments, any pushback about further stimulus packages or ultra easy policy could add pressure on risk sentiment and of course feed into the current downside, which has been exacerbated by those second wave virus fears. Then looking at possible currencies to pair in the case of a sentiment shift. Now our focus this week, as we said, will be on risk sentiment, which means our highest or best highest probability trading setups would come from pairing high beta currencies against safe haven currencies. Now, as a reminder, the high beta currencies are considered as the Aussie, the CAD and the Kiwi, while safe haven currencies are considered as the Japanese yen, Swiss franc and the US dollar. So if we do have a hawkish sentiment shift for risk sentiment or a risk on sentiment, we can look for potential upside in the Aussie, the Kiwi, the CAD, and also look for potential downside then in the Japanese yen, Swiss franc and US dollar. And in contrast, if we have a dovish sentiment shift for risk sentiment or a risk off sentiment, we can look for potential downside in the Aussie Kiwi CAD and look for potential upside in the Japanese yen, Swiss franc and US dollar. You will also need to keep other current sentiment in mind when making your decisions such as what is oil prices doing for the Canadian dollar, for example, or what Chinese developments we have on the Aussie front. And of course, the upcoming RBNZ meeting, which we have on Wednesday for the Kiwi dollar. Don't trade risk sentiment uh, trades in a vacuum. Always consider the underlying themes and the underlying sentiment drivers as well. So looking at some possible economic da data that we can trade into this week, as risk sentiment can be fickle and oftentimes change course quite quickly, we won't be looking to trade into the um, upcoming data points this week. The best opportunities will be those that occur from clearly defined uh, shifts in risk sentiment. And remember that these types of trades are like restaurant takeaways, always best served fresh. So the fresher and more significant these shifts are, the better they are to trade. And in this type of market environment, it's not always wise to aim for too ambitious targets. It might be best to stick to your shorter term targets, such as your daily S1 or R1 pivot points or ADR highs and lows, obviously incorporating your other key technical levels like support and resistance and psychological price levels as well. And do that for the highest probability entries and exits in these type of short term trading environments.